Backpacking is definitely one of the most fun and rewarding activities that you can do. But as fun as backpacking is, if you don't know how to do it properly, like most things, it can become very dangerous. Everyone has their favorite filtration system or their favorite sleep system, etc. But today I've taken everything and I've grouped it into seven categories that as long as you make sure you have these seven categories well planned for, you'll be ready for your adventure no matter what specific style you prefer. So let's go take a look. Now, as I stated earlier, the most important thing in the first place is having a plan, period. And congratulations, if you're watching this video, that means you're trying to create a plan. So way ahead of time, in advance, figure out who you're going with, where you're going, how long you're going for, look at the campsites that are available, the parking that's available, the specific rules for that camp park, perhaps. What parking permits do I have to have? How many people can be at a campsite? How much do I have to pay for the campsite? Fires, what are allowed, bear country, you know. Look for the specifics for that area way ahead of time. Also take note of the specific features of this trip. What's the terrain gonna look like? What's the weather expected to be? What's the climate of the area that I'm traveling to? All of this will have a big impact on the later categories of today in determining exactly what you need to bring. As far as navigation goes, have a way to navigate. If you wanna use a map and compass, go for it. A little old school, but go for it. And actually I recommend probably having one with you just in case the technology fails. But because of the beautiful innovation of technology, there is a wonderful app that I like to use called Onyx backcountry. It's an app on my phone that for a relatively cheap price pops up with basically every trail you can imagine listed there just like you would go on like Apple Maps or something. When you zoom into the area that you're going to be hiking in it's going to have a detailed topography map, it's going to have the trail difficulty as you go along, it's going to have campsites labeled with even information about the campsites on the bigger ones and then even more specifically while you're hiking you can click on a little feature and it's going to show you like you're driving a car which direction you need to turn. When you come to a fork in the trail, you take your phone out, you point it in a certain direction, that little navigator GPS thing is gonna show you which way you actually need to go, just in case you might make the wrong turn. Onyx Backcountry or another app similar is gonna make your life so much easier. This next category actually fits really well with the last one. You need to be physically prepared. Look, backpacking is gonna keep you honest, whether you want to be or not. Know where you're gonna be ahead of time. Like in the last step, while you're looking at the terrain and the trail difficulty, be asking yourself, okay, is this really realistic for me? Is this where I'm at right now? I'm not saying that never one day you will be or that you can train and get there someday, but for where you are right now or in a month, whenever you're about to be hiking that area, is this really realistic for me? Too many times, new hikers especially will get themselves into the position where they look at, okay, what's the average speed that somebody walks at? Oh, two miles an hour. Okay, look, this trip's like 12 miles. That's not bad. And then they get out there and they're like, man, this is 12 miles straight up. Basically, they'll get themselves into situations they're not ready for and then they're gonna need somebody to go rescue them. And look, if you're not ready for that 13 miler yet, there's a few ways to get there. The number one most recommended is just start with smaller hikes and work your way up to the larger hikes. But then there's another way, which is simply exercising those specific areas of your body at a home gym or something like legs and cardio insanely. Now, I still wouldn't recommend just working out your legs and some cardio and then going and trying to hike the rim of the Grand Canyon or something. But, um, you know, that will allow you to be able to prepare a little bit. All right, this next category me and every other backpacker in the world always rattle on about and it's the big three this category covers what most backpackers would probably claim is like 60 percent of backpacking itself the big three stands for sleep system shelter system and the backpack that you're using let's first talk about the sleep system so you need a good sleeping bag that's lightweight and is going to keep you warm to probably about 10 degrees lower than what the low is for the night. That just allows you to have a little bit of room for error in case it gets a little colder than it says, or if that sleeping bag isn't really comfortable down to the actual rating that they advertise for. A lot of times they'll advertise for a certain temperature and really that just means, okay, you can survive in this temperature, but you won't be comfortable. So if you give yourself about 10 degrees or so, 15 degrees or so of uh, room for error, that's gonna keep you comfortable for sure as the night goes on. Also, you need a good R-rated sleeping pad. Now, if it's in the summer, I guess you don't necessarily have to have an R-rated pad, but um, I just, I use my R-rated pad basically all the time, even if it is summer, because a lot of your body heat is lost through the ground. So you need a barrier between you and the ground, and then even more so, you need an insulated barrier, so it actually helps you by reflecting your body heat back onto you. Honestly, I'd say the sleeping pad is a good chunk of how warm you are at night. It's 25% at least of how warm you stay at night. The next section of the big three is the shelter system. Uh, similar to the sleeping bag, you need a good quality tent that isn't super heavy, so it's gonna break your back while hiking. You can start off maybe with a little bit of a cheaper tent, especially if you're doing like low miles, maybe nothing extreme, the weather looks good. But the thing is, as time goes on, the more expensive tents are going to last longer than the less expensive tents. And in a big storm, when it gets put to the test, you'll see the less 
expensive tents, the cheaper made tents, often the seams will start to leak. So you just wanna make sure that you can trust the shelter you have no matter what weather comes your way. Now, some people for their shelter system actually do hammock camping, which I think the main thing they like about that is it's a little more natural and it's super easy to get down on the weight. Look, personally, I haven't gotten into it much yet. I wanna try it out some more in the future, but I haven't gotten into it too much yet, but I do have super huge respect for those people. So that's also an option just to keep in mind you could do a hammock. Now keep in mind bringing a ground cloth or maybe just some Tyvek cloth or something to put underneath your tent, especially if it's one of the more expensive ones, just try to protect that floor of your tent a little bit more from abrasion. And the third and final of the big three is the backpack. Since it's called backpacking, I'd assume you need a backpack. You gotta be looking for a good quality backpack that's gonna take the load of the weight off of you. I mean, it's always gonna be on you, but a good backpack's gonna take it and distribute it evenly between your shoulders and your hips to where you're gonna obviously feel heavier when you're wearing it, but it's not gonna be really pinching in a certain area. Also, a good thing to keep in mind is look for the specific features that you want in a backpack. So an idea is maybe trying out some of the cheaper ones first with different styles, um, trying it out for a few trips and seeing what you like better. Some people like the bags that are basically just a, a big bag and there's no organization you shove everything in there because it saves on some weight of the pack itself um, me I've used for years actually the ones that like Gregory they have a lot of organizational pockets I'm looking into other backpacks as well but you know it's all on your personal preference if you like more organization if you like lighter weight and less organization Try out some cheaper versions so you know what you want before you put your money into a good investment of a good pack. Also pay attention to the ventilation on the pack. There's gonna be some good mesh on the quality packs that's gonna allow you to have good ventilation in your back. It's gonna save you in the summer months and even sometimes when you're hiking really hard in the winter months. Look at the load lifters, the little straps you pull on to get that weight more centered over your body. Look at the hip belt. Is there enough support on the hip belt? Some companies put a lot of work into the actual backpack and then they kind of forget about the hip belt. Just be looking for the specific features that you want in your bag. But before I go into the next category, I just ask that if you like this video and you want to see more of it, um, I would appreciate it if you'd hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, the bell for notifications. Your support means the world to me and it allows me to keep pushing and get more videos out to you. So this next category is nutrition, and this should be also another given you need to eat while you're out on trail. And the best option for you to get the calories that you need while you're out backpacking and worried about how much weight you're carrying, nine out of 10 times is gonna be a dehydrated meal. They taste way better than ramen every night, they're super lightweight, and they're gonna give you the calories that you need. This goes super similar to the preparation category, just figure out how many meals you're gonna need to eat while you're out there, and then bring maybe an extra 500 calories or so just in case you have a harder day. Bring a lot of energizing and healthy trail snacks while you're hiking and try to stay away from the liquid filled foods. That is soup cans, applesauce, yeah, applesauce, if you know, if you just love bringing applesauce on trail. Um, you know, anyways, obviously the more water-filled products are gonna weigh more. Also, you're gonna need a preferred way to cook this food, whether that is an MSR pocket rocket like I have, or maybe an alcohol stove or something. You're gonna need a way to cook the food or boil the water while you're on trail, and you're gonna need to bring the appropriate amount of fuel to fuel that stove. Speaking of water weight, this next category is about hydration. You need a way to carry some water while you're on trail and you need a way to filter some water. Once again, everything links back to that preparation category. Is, is this a climate where there's gonna be a lot of water available to where I can just filter it along the way? Or is this a drier climate where I'm gonna need to bring more water with me pre-filtered so I don't have to worry about finding a water source? I always bring like a liter water bottle in one pocket and another liter water bottle in the other pocket with me when I go to start hiking and then I'll filter at sources along the ways as I use my water that I've brought with me. If you're hiking in a more arid region, you're going to obviously need to change the amount of water that you bring with you initially. And the next category up is layering. Layering is how we as backpackers deal with temperature changes. Before you go out, check that weather, see what the temperature fluctuations are supposed to be, and make sure that you have the appropriate layering system to deal with that. The layering system that I use, which is gonna get you through most temperatures in most seasons in most areas of the United States, starts with a smart wool base t-shirt. If it's really cold, maybe some smart wool long johns or the tights or whatever you wanna call them as a man. And then a smart wool 250 long sleeve pullover shirt as my mid layer, and then a down jacket with a fill of dependent upon how cold you're expecting it to get. And then I always bring like an older, like outer layering to protect my expensive down jacket from thorns or fire and stuff like that. Of course, if it's gonna be negative 40 degrees where you're camping, that, that's not in the same category of a layering system that I'm talking about. So that's a total different animal. And also if you're expecting the low to be like 60 at the mo like at the lowest, and it's like middle of the summer, don't bring along a huge puffy jacket. I did that a few times when I was starting out and it was totally unnecessary. If, if you're completely safe without that layer, 
just drop it for some extra weight. Now I always bring like my Merino 250 wool because sometimes even in the summer months it might be a little colder in the morning even if it was like 90 the night before, especially in desert regions. It can be like 90, 100, 120 in the day and then drop down to like 40 at night. So just make sure that you're keeping a good eye on a quality layering system that you need to bring appropriate for the trip that you're planning. All right, in this next category, the seventh category for today is a super important one. It is footwear. Newsflash, backpackers walk. So if you don't like walking, you probably don't want a backpack. And walking, for most people, requires shoes. So you're gonna need a good quality, comfortable pair of shoes. Now when I was starting, I used to like hiking boots because I liked the amount of support that they gave me. They were rigid and rugged and manly and if I hit my foot against a stone or something, you know, it wouldn't hurt my foot. But then I did some math one day and I was like, okay, a four pound pair of hiking boots um, times you know, 2,000 steps, which is the average for 10 miles of walking, equals like 40,000 extra pounds that I'm lifting with my legs per day. And that's insane. And not only that, but honestly, in the summer months, in the warmer areas of the United States, when you're hiking in hiking boots, your feet just need to breathe and they get hot. So there's absolutely still some situations where I wanna use my boots, like rougher terrain or if it's colder weather, but I honestly started trying out with some trail runners. So I found a trail running shoe that kind of met me in the middle. I think it's like the, Adi the Adidas, Terex or something, I'll put it up on the screen. But I found this shoe and I, what I like about it is it's half the weight, it's like at two pounds or something and it still offers a lot of support. It's made out of a very rugged material so it still feels like my foot is protected in there and it's got the great traction that I love. But it's half the weight, so I'm at least only lifting 20,000 pounds a day. Maybe we should just all go barefoot. Also, hopefully you know this, but just in case you don't, with any new shoe you buy and any new boot you buy, make sure that you wear it around a little bit for a few days before you actually go on your trip to allow it to break in before you get on trail, just so you avoid the blisters. Speaking about blisters, make sure that you have the right cushioning socks that you need to protect your feet from your shoes as you're hiking, because blisters are a sure way to ruin your trip. All right guys, so in review, the seven categories, at least my seven categories for backpacking that you need to have covered before going out, is navigation, personal fitness preparation, have your big three covered, make sure you have the proper nutrition and the proper hydration, have a good quality layering system that's gonna cover you while you're out there, and have a good, reliable, trusty footwear system that's gonna keep you comfortable while you're walking those miles. Look, if you have these seven categories covered, then you're golden to go backpacking. The technicalities of the specific gear and the specific style you wanna do each of these seven categories is up to you. That's the beauty about backpacking. You get to do it how you want to do it. And as you go along, you'll find as you test out different gear, your personal backpacking personality is gonna become visible to everybody that's around you. So I hope this video was very helpful for you guys, and let me know in the comments down below what you think. Thank you guys for watching. My name is Thomas Copley. Goodbye.